This video is a lot of really important information about DaVinci Resolve that especially a lot of new users completely miss. And just as a note, while I was recording this video, uh, my face cam uh, didn't record, so I won't be down in the corner like normal, and sometimes it'll feel like I'm talking to the camera, but I won't actually be looking at you. That's okay. Moving on. In your project manager, this is what pops up when you start Resolve. You have all the projects in your database because DaVinci Resolve runs off databases, not project files. There won't be a dedicated file on your system for each project. While you can export projects as a dedicated file, mostly for backup or archival, when you create a project and as you are working on that, it will be stored in a database. This has a couple of really convenient upsides. That entire database can be stored and backed up and moved around wherever you want from system system to system. The database system is what allows for some really powerful other features like uh, power bins. And whenever there is an update for DaVinci Resolve, instead of having to uh, update each project file like you do with some other pieces of software, the entire database updates, and then you can just uh, pick right back up where you were with all of your projects. Next, sometimes when you drag footage uh, into your project, especially if you haven't created a timeline yet, or if you haven't really messed with your default project settings, you might get this pop-up. Now this does explain what it is, but it can be sometimes helpful for someone else to explain it. It says, uh, change project frame rate. The selected clips have a different frame rate to the project. Would you like to change your timeline frame rate to match? You can't undo this action. I feel safe saying most of the time you will want to click change. If you are dragging in source footage that is the frame rate you want to be working on, then that's the frame rate you want to be working on and you can click change. If you are, you know, mixing frame rates or doing some other fun stuff, uh, another healthy rule of thumb is to just generally create your timeline first. You can right click here in your media pool, go to timelines, create new timeline. And again, especially if you haven't dove into default project settings, you can uncheck use project settings, head over to format and dial in your resolution and frame rate here. Next is another pop-up you might run into, uh, or specifically you'll run into if you're using the free version of Resolve. I'm in the studio version here, but to demonstrate uh, when you will run into this issue, uh, in your effects library, uh, if you hover over any effect, it will apply it to your clip. And if uh, you are trying to uh, apply or preview an effect that is using a limitation that is not available in the free version, it will give you this pop-up. But since you aren't actually uh, applying that effect, you're just previewing, you can click off and keep going. But if that gets a little annoying, something you can do is come up to these three dots in your effects library and uncheck hover scrub preview. You will completely lose the ability to you know preview as you hover scrub, but you won't get that annoying pop-up and if you generally know what effects you want to apply this will save you from annoying pop-ups when you are just mousing over your effects to get to what you really want next we're talking about something that tons of new resolve users run into and it can be a, a really big headache if you don't know what's going on as you can see i've got a whole bunch of clips on my timeline and if i just wanted to cut a bit out of this you know middle clip here i would cut it i would cut it and then if i select that clip and press delete Oh no, tons of other stuff happened. In the default keyboard layout for DaVinci Resolve, the delete key is a ripple delete. It will delete what you have selected like I have here, but it will also ripple everything on your timeline to close that gap. You see, I have this uh, clip on a timeline above it, and when I delete that, it also shifts that forward if you have lots of complex timing. This could be a mess if you don't know uh, it's what you're doing. Like the name says, it will ripple to close that gap. You're seeing this first clip. Um, if that has a trim, then it will also ripple delete that. But if this is what you don't want, you have the backspace key, which will just delete um, your actual selection and not mess with the position of any clips on your timeline. Really important to know. And of course, you can just go into your key bindings and change those if you don't like them. Next, we're gonna dip back into um, some more general broad settings to talk about autosave and backups. If you're on a recent version of Resolve, I think they finally changed this in like uh, the last like year or so. But now in DaVinci Resolve, autosave is on by default. It's amazing. <laughs> it's called live save. And with a few exceptions, um, I have another video I'll link to um, with a bug that still sometimes comes up where live save will like just like selectively turn off but you can always nudge it anyway watch the video watch that video if you think you're running into some issues with live save like not not saving but that should kick in after almost any keystroke when you're hopping between pages if you do change something 
um, right on your timeline, it will get the little pop-up that says edited, but you see that went away almost instantly because live save kicked in and now this project is saved. If my computer were to completely you know, turn off on its own, I could hop back in with that exact change saved. But in addition to that, you have project backups. If I go to uh, DaVinci Resolve Preferences, head over to User, Project Save and Load, here we have Save Settings. We have that live save, which again now is on by default, but we also have Project Backups. If you're working on, you know, an especially important project, or you know, this would be awful to have on all the time, you can click Project Backups. You can control at what interval it creates a backup, you know, how many days or hours of that rolling backup backup to keep and choose the specific selection where it saves those backups. And you know how we said that you can selectively export projects? This is what that's doing. It's not storing this information inside that database system. So if something were to go wrong on a database level, these backups would be perfectly fine. Next is something I'm just going to mention and then, you know, plug another video. Uh, in your inspector is where you have lots of controls over your footage. Uh, at the top, you have these transform options like zoom, position, rotation, that's cool. Uh, by the way, you can uh, double click to reset any of those, but in your viewer, you have this little drop down menu down here. And the first option is this transform. If you toggle that on, now you can control all those same parameters right in your viewer. And it's pretty neat. There's also all these other options. Uh, that is what I'm gonna kick you to another video, uh, going through all of these tons of power here. And, and I kinda lied, we're gonna talk about one of them, uh, that being dynamic zoom. You can also toggle on dynamic zoom in the inspector, but I'm gonna talk about one issue slash bug with dynamic zoom um, that can be frustrating if you run into it as a new user and don't know what you're getting. And a side note, this is also an issue uh, if you just keyframe by hand and if your keyframes combine a move that both zooms and changes the position, check this out. So dynamic zoom, right? If I change these boxes, oh, uh, I will also totally just trim this so we actually see that move executed. You see now this is zooming out. I will come to my inspector settings, uh, swap that dynamic zoom. So now it is just slowly pushing in. That's cool. I will also, you know, definitely shorten that. So it's a quicker move. It's zooming in. Uh, if you have this toggled on, you see this green outline is where the move starts. The red outline is where the move, you know, moves to. But if I really, um, you know, pull this down and especially change the position, when I preview that, if this dynamic zoom ease is on linear, then things will feel all right-ish. If I change that to ease, then now, you instantly start to see the border of this image and then it sort of like corrects. Something about um, combining a move with both zoom and position, like the ease values are a little funky. So I would keep dynamic zoom to pretty uh, broad and gentle moves. If you're doing something extreme like this, maybe look to some tools like Mr. Alex Tech's Magic Animate or, you know, build it yourself in the Fusion page. And last little tip that again is also uh, plugged to a fuller video. We're going to talk about the render cache very quickly. Mostly, um, if you have no idea what the render cache is, Let's talk render cache. Mostly, if you have no idea what the render cache is, um, it's something that can really help, especially if you're running into choppy playback. A lot of people run into this for the first time when they are beginning to mess with the Fusion titles. They'll download a plugin, maybe one of mine. It'll be really cool. They'll drop it on a timeline, and all of a sudden, their footage is not playing back full speed. If you come up to playback, render cache, this might be set to none by default. Let's get extreme with an example. Uh, I have pulled in one of the included uh, Fusion templates that you have in the Fusion page. If you don't know about this, I have an ancient video all about this. I might talk about it again soon, but I just have this pulled up and when I play, we're getting what, like eight, nine frames per second while we have this giant, you know, burning jet engine in <laughs> superimposed over our scene. Depending on your system, depending on what fusion effect, even if you have a few basic like text effects over your scene, you'll probably start to see performance impacted when you're trying to process all of that live. But we can come up to playback, render cache, and most of the time um, it's fine just to set this to smart. Then in your timeline down here, you'll get a bar that will change from red to blue. If you wanna force this cache, you can come up uh, to these three dots in your viewer, make sure show all video frames uh, is checked. And then if you play, it will cache as it plays. You can see, um, and it's having a little trouble here. I'll just play. And now, yeah, it's chugging along. And again, we're back down like five frames a second. But when this is done and that bar is completely blue, when it reaches the end of our clip, 
if I go back and play, hey, we are getting full playback of a wild, wild effect, uh, but both the effect and our footage are playing back at a solid 30 frames per second. That's basic render cache. I have a very recent video all about the render cache. By the way, this is generating files that could be taking up like hundreds of gigabytes of space. So if you don't know anything about the render cache, um, go watch that other video.